Well, church, I want you to know that I live uh, 18 years, um, born in 1973, July 21st, and February 9th, 1992, I was actually born again, born into the kingdom of God. The reason I bring that up is I lived 18 years apart from Christ, and I lived without righteousness, and I lived in sin, just like everyone else who doesn't know Jesus. I lived in uh, the various uh, lusts of the flesh and different things. The reason I bring that up is not to glorify the devil or glorify my failure. Never once in all of my sinful activities and pursuit of Satan by doing whatever I thought was right, did I ever have an inkling to speak in tongues when I was, uh, d you name it, whatever it was. I never spoke in tongues when I served the devil is the bottom line. The reason I bring that up is some people erroneously have been told that tongues is of the devil. Now I'm going to tell you a, a quick little testimony before I get into this teaching. And that is one time I brought a girl to church when I'd first been saved and I knew she was demonized. And as praise and worship started, that demon literally took over her body and her eyes changed and it wasn't the girl looking at me in, anymore. It was somebody else. But I didn't care. I'm not scared of the devil. I have power and authority over the devil, not because I'm a pastor, not because I'm in a five-fold ministry, but because I'm a believer. And I was only born again just uh, about six to eight months at this point, just been filled with the Spirit. And praise and worship began to start. And I lifted both my hands up to worship Jesus and I began to sing in the Spirit, sing in other tongues. As I did that, had my, my hand up, my eyes closed, all of a sudden, that demonic spirit that had taken over that girl grabbed my arm and said, stop it, you're hurting me. I want you to know that there is damage done to the dark kingdom when you pray in other tongues. And by the Spirit of God, I was such a baby Christian, I didn't know I could do this. I said, sit down in Jesus' name. And... All of a sudden, she sat down. I say she, that the, the body of that girl sat down with that demon in full control of her. And it was like a seatbelt was put on her by an angel. Because she started going like this, and she said, what did you do? I can't move. <laughs> and I, didn't, I don't have a scripture for that, but I have an experience in line with the word of God. That we have power and authority over all the power of the enemy. So don't put up with the devil in your life. Trample him in Jesus' name. Amen. But that motivates me to teach this tonight, that the devil hates speaking in other tongues. He hates it when you get filled with the power of God. Because because a powerless Christian, he can overcome. But a power-filled believer, he's scared to death. He's scared the death of. Amen? Because Jesus told us. He didn't say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to his disciples. First, he said, before you go, wait. In Luke 24, 49, he said, wait until, until you are endued or clothed with power from on high. He said, you need power. Don't go out in your own ability and your own strength. Go out in my ability and my strength. That's what Jesus told us. And the, all the 120 believers were in the upper room. The Holy Spirit came upon them on the day of Pentecost. And, and when the day of Pentecost was, all, was fully come, they're all gathered together in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came, came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. One sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Holy Spirit didn't fall on the 12 apostles present there. He fell on 100% of those present, 120. They, didn't, they had to do the speaking. They were filled with the Spirit, but they began to speak. So this baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for elite Christians. It's not for those that have the gift of tongues and interpretation. It's for every believer can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it's a direct prayer language with the Father. So I want you to understand there is, number one, there's no condemnation if you've not received this gift gift yet. If you've not received this gift, it's probably because you haven't received the faith to receive it yet because nobody's taught you about it. The Bible says, how shall they believe unless they hear? And how shall they hear unless a preacher comes and preaches a message? So I'm preaching a message to you about why you can speak in other tongues, the Bible reasons you can speak in other tongues, so you can receive this glorious, wonderful gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus didn't even begin his ministry till he had this 
this gift. When he was, he lived 30 years and he never did a miracle sign or wonder. But when the when he went down in the River Jordan, baptized by John, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and then his his miraculous ministry started. And the first ministry of Holy Spirit was he went into the wilderness and he whipped the devil in his own life. And that's the first minute reason all of us need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not so we can help somebody else. It's so we can help ourselves. We need help. I need help. I need to walk in love. I need to be conformed to the image of Christ. I need to change, but I can't do it myself. I've tried and it doesn't work. The one who changes me is Holy Spirit, is his power and his love and his goodness and his ability. Amen. And so I'm talking to you tonight about how you can be transformed personally by God himself, by receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how you can drive the devil out of your life, number one, and then you can be empowered, just like Jesus was in Acts 10, 38, to go about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. The Holy Spirit will help you do good. He'll help you to heal all those who are oppressed of the devil. He'll help you do the things Jesus commanded us to do. Jesus commanded the church to heal the sick, Cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. Why? Freely you have received, freely give. We've, been, we've received authority, but we've also received dunamis power, iscus power, and kratos power. Three different Greek words of the power of God. A dunamis power is the explosive power of God like dynamite. Kratos power is eruptive power that is uncontrollable. The power of God can just up, just erupt in an area in a second, and everybody in that room falls out under the power of God. Lord, give us more of that in Jesus' name. Amen. We want the miracles, but we want the, the power of God to just, I, I would love it if I just fell out, out on this broadcast and I couldn't get up because the power of God was so strong. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God. And, but we need the teaching of the Word of God, too. We need the power. We need the teaching. Amen. And then there's the iscus power of God. And the iscus power of God means the strength of God is behind the power that he manifests. And his name is El Elyon, the Most High God, meaning that he is the highest God in the universe. He is the only God in the universe. And he's absolutely almighty in power, and no foe can withstand his power. And he's in you, and he's in me. And that's good news. Are you ready to get into the first reason every believer should speak in other tongues? I know I am. Let's get into the word. Number one, this is Isaiah 28, 11 and 12. Isaiah 28, 11 and 12. Number one, the first reason every believer should speak in other tongues is rest and refreshing. Rest and refreshing. This is Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Look at this. God said he was going to, in the future, that people were going to speak with stammering lip in another tongue. He's talking about speaking, the gift of speaking in other tongues, which Jesus said in Mark 16, it's a sign that would follow all those that believe. And he said this would cause rest and refreshing. If you're burned out in your Christian walk, if you're burned out in ministry, let me tell you why. There's a reason why. The reason is you maybe don't know about this secret. Here is the secret to longevity in the kingdom of God. It's rest and refreshing. I'm called to experience times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. You're called to experience times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And that times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord, one of those times, yes, worship, yes, prayer, but praying in other tongues brings a rest and a refreshing where the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When I pray in other tongues, I'm waiting on God. I'm renewing my strength. I'm getting his strength. I'm getting infused with supernatural strength so that I don't run out of spiritual gas, so to speak. We drive a car, we got to put gas in it. We're a spirit being and we're a wine skin. We got to get filled with the wine, the wine of the Holy Spirit. One of the primary ways in the New Testament we get filled with this rest and refreshing is the baptism of the Holy Spirit in speaking in other tongues. Number two, tongues is a supernatural sign that follow them that believe. Mark 16, 17, I just said it. Tongues is a supernatural sign that follow them that believe. The Bible says, Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. 
they shall speak with new tongues. We're supposed to have signs following us. We're, we're not following signs and chasing signs. Signs are following us as believers. One of the signs that should follow you and should follow me is that we speak in other tongues. You know, it's supernatural to speak in other tongues. It may not be spectacular, but the very fact that you can just stop at any moment. And begin to speak in a heavenly language. And some people would say, how, how do you think you can control God like that? How do you think you can turn him on and turn him off? No, 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 no. <laughs> Holy Spirit is always on. Holy Spirit is always ready to give the utterance. It's up to me by faith to step out and speak. And some of the driest times that you might feel like, I don't feel like speaking in tongues, that's literally why God gave you the gift. Literally. Because when you feel dry, you begin to speak in tongues. And before long, you feel the presence of God. You experience the presence of God filling your life up. Amen. A supernatural sign for unbelievers. Number three. Tongues, the initial sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do I know I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit? Did God just leave it arbitrarily up to any reason whatsoever? And, I, you know, I, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit because this, that, or the other? No. God said that in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, that the initial evidence, the, the, the byproduct, what happens when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit is you overflow. And when you overflow, you're going to speak in this heavenly language. Now, you can resist speaking in this language depending on the strength of the anointing. The anointing of God can get so strong that you can't resist speaking, or you may not even know you're speaking. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. It happened when I got, I was in a meeting and I went up front to be prayed for. The evangelist was there. He didn't even lay hands on me. He just said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the power of God fell upon me. And I didn't even know what was going on. I just, I remember I was experiencing a trance where all my physical senses were suspended, but it felt like there was burning glory uh, not a bad burn, a good burn. Like somebody had poured five gallons of gasoline all over me and around me and lit it, only it didn't burn bad. It burned glorious and holy and beautiful and precious, and I have no words for it. And I didn't realize what had happened, but I had, I had been slain the Spirit. I was, I was laying on the ground, and then eventually I heard this person speaking in tongues in an extremely loud, powerful voice. And I, in my natural mind, I went, wow, somebody really got touched by God in a mighty way. And a few seconds later, I realized it was me. And then I realized I was laying on my back. And then I realized my hands were up. <laughs> Some people think the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. No, <laughs> maybe you've just experienced low levels of the power. I'm talking the Holy Spirit. I look for his power. I... I had one evangelist that's a friend of mine. He said, I love the scary power of God, where God's power becomes so strong and, and it's so intense that there's a holy reverence that comes over your body because he's just so awesome. Not that he doesn't love you, not that he isn't a good God, but you are overwhelmed by his awesomeness. I long for that kind of power to manifest in the church. Amen. Amen. So in Acts 2, 4, there's 120 people gathered and 120 people, everybody spoke in tongues. Now, you couldn't have faith to believe that you'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues unless everybody was everybody got it. If Let's say in the upper room, if 109 out of 120 got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and 11 people didn't, well, what if I'm not one of the, what if I'm one of the 11? What if I'm not one of the, uh, the ones that were chosen, so to speak? And no, it doesn't work like that. This gift has been given. In Acts 19, Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So the receiving is on our end. It's not on God giving it. God has given the person the gift of Holy Spirit when he comes inside your being in fullness, there is an overflow that will cause you to speak in other tongues, and it's up to us to receive this gift. But again, we can't, we can't receive the gift unless we've been taught. So 120 out of 120 were baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is God's will for every single person, every single person. You might say, well, didn't the Holy Spirit pass away? No, 
God, the, the third person of the Trinity, never died. He's still alive. He's still on the earth. And there are bil- over a billion people that speak in other tongues today, right now. So those billion people aren't crazy. They're receiving what the Bible promised us we could have. I want everything the Bible promises me I can have in this life because it doesn't do me any good to speak in tongues in heaven. I want to speak in tongues here because it receives. it helps me receive mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. Number four, the fourth reason every believer should speak in other tongues is supernatural prayer for unknown situations. Supernatural prayer for unknown situations. You know, one time my life was possibly spared when the enemy tried to take me out in Bible school because of supernatural prayer for unknown situations. At this point, I was uh, I was dating a girl, and she had a big picture of me in her room, and uh, she woke up one morning early. It was like 6.30 a.m., and she didn't normally get up till 7. And she saw my picture, and she felt a compunction, an unction from Holy Spirit to pray for me that something was amiss, something was up. And she, she didn't know what was wrong, obviously. So she, she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. She began to speak in other tongues and pray for me. It went on for 30 minutes, and then after about 30 minutes, she felt a peace and a joy come and a laughter come. She thought, everything's good, everything's fine. Well, I was driving to work that day, and to make a long story short, I was in a crash that should have been fatal. My roommate was driving his little truck, and uh, the accident was so bad, it, it stopped traffic for over an hour because his truck was ripped apart in the intersection the rear axle the drive the the drive shaft both wheels the the front was caved in the bed of the truck was almost ripped off and parts scattered everywhere i walked away without one scratch without one problem because i was prayed for now if the truck would have been a foot and a half to two feet position positioned differently in the crash, I would have been killed nearly instantly in the crash. God protected me. He sent his angels and protected me. Praise God. Prayer protected me. Supernatural prayer. And the funny thing was my roommate Brent found out that he had had relatives who were sensitive to Holy Spirit that woke up that night in the middle of the night and prayed for him. And he should have been severely injured as well. He was, Both of us were totally uninjured. He had a couple scrapes on his knees, but we should have been seriously injured or killed, and we were fine. And it was nothing but a miracle of Jesus. And you may have children that you wonder, oh my gosh, I need to control their life and try and prevent them from ever being in a dangerous situation. Let me tell you, you're not omnipresent, but you're God is, and his Holy Spirit is everywhere at the same time. And if your family or loved one or a missionary on the other side of the world needs prayer, all you have to do is get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And there's times that you'll feel, for lack of a better word, you'll sense that there's something that needs to be prayed about. You don't even need to know in your mind what's going on, but you can pray in that situation and you can see God uh, avert strategies of the devil accidents, calamities, all kinds of things because you spoke in other tongues. I'll tell you, this is good truth. We need to know this. We need to take advantage of it. Amen. Number five, number five, the fifth reason every believer should speak in other tongues is it keeps our prayers in line with God's will. Do you know that I can mess up and I can pray out of my mind in English and I can miss the will of God in my prayer. I really could do that. But if I pray in other tongues, Holy Spirit is giving me those words. Now, I still have to speak them out, but that means the words he's giving me are the perfect will of God. Romans eight twenty seven says this, and the searcher of hearts knows what the Spirit's meaning is because his intercession for God's people His intercessions for God's people are in harmony with God's will. You want to pray the perfect will of God and a prayer you can't mess up? Pray in other tongues, and you'll always pray the perfect will of God. Isn't that awesome? Because you know what? Half the time, I don't even know what I need to pray for. I mean, honestly, I've got a prayer list and things that I pray for 
you know, on a regular basis. But I don't know all the other stuff. But Holy Spirit knows everything. He searches. He's the greatest search engine in the universe. He searches the will of God. He searches, and then he brings back the heart and mind of the Father, and then he prays it through us so we can experience it in our life. You'll always pray in line with God's word. Amen. When you pray in other tongues. Number, number six. Number six, the sixth reason every believer should speak in other tongues is when you speak in other tongues, uh, this is Romans chapter five, verse five, you will keep full of the love of God. You will keep full of the love of God. In other words, speaking in other tongues keeps us full of the love of God. Romans chapter five and verse five says this, and hope does not put to shame because our hearts are full of the love of God through the Holy Spirit which is given to us. Think of that, church. Our hearts are full of the love of God. How does this happen? Through the Holy Spirit. In other words, if I'm having trouble with my love walk, the first place I should look is am I spending enough time praying in other tongues? I recommend, and this is what one of my uh, spiritual fathers in my life, Kenneth E. Hagan, a great man of God, uh, recommended is that every person that's a believer spend at least 30 minutes a day praying in other tongues. Now that may not seem like a lot, but you know what? I used to have a commute to work that was 20 minutes and I would just put praise and worship on, and I'd pray in other tongues. There's 20 minutes right there. And then I, throughout the day, I'd just pray in other tongues. And you can even pray in other tongues under your breath. You don't have to, you know, shout it out every time. But you can, you can constantly leverage this gift, <laughs> a free gift from heaven, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and this prayer language for your benefit and to fill you with the love of God. Number seven, the seventh reason Every believer should speak in other tongues. Is praying in tongues stimulates faith. Praying in tongues stimulates faith. What verse do we have? Uh, this is the book of Jude, verse 20. There's only one chapter, so it's chapter 1, verse 20. I'm reading in the Amplified Translation. It says, but you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice higher and higher Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. So when the Bible talks about praying in the Spirit, many times it's talking about praying in other tongues. When you do this, you rise like an edifice higher and higher, and you stimulate your faith. Your faith not your faith. Your faith. You stimulate, stimulate your faith, amen, as you pray in the Holy Spirit. You rise like an edifice. So praying in tongues doesn't release faith, but praying in tongues uh, stimulates your faith. Think about this. Every word that I speak and you speak in unknown tongues is a word we don't know before we speak it. In other words, it literally, it's exercising your faith when you pray in other tongues because you don't know the next word you're going to say. Now, to the natural mind, that kind of seems uh, irrational, but we need to get beyond our rational mind, and we need to get in the mind of Christ, and we do that by praying in other tongues many times. Amen? So you build yourself up on your most holy faith. And Galatians 5, 6 says this, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. As I said earlier, that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. When the love of God is shed abroad in our heart, then the faith of God works by love. And so when we're filled with the Holy Spirit by praying in other tongues, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart, and what happens, our faith starts to work. Why? It's not working by my love. It's working because I'm experiencing his love and acceptance and knowing I'm right with him. I'm experiencing his presence as I'm filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I speak in other tongues. I experience his presence, his love, his unconditional love of my daddy God, and it gets rid of an orphan spirit, and it makes me understand that I am accepted in the beloved, and that acceptance causes me to be able to believe every promise. You know, you could, you could get two people arguing theology. Is it God's will to heal? Is it not God's will to heal? But here's the bottom line. He's a daddy God. He's a father God. And every father on this earth, if they had the power, would heal their kid. 
Are you kidding me? If one of my children had something wrong with them and I had power, and I do, and you do too, to change the situation in Jesus' name, I'm going to use that power to change the situation. And you need to understand, if I then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to my kids, how much more shall my heavenly Father give good things to me, healing included, all the blessings included? That's my daddy. Amen? That's your daddy. Number eight, moving right along. Number eight, the eighth reason every person should believe or should speak in other tongues, and I think this is one of the most important, is personal edification. Personal edification. In 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says this, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. The church is so big into prophecy, and I'm for prophecy. I don't despise prophecy. Prophecy is great. We need prophecy. Amen? And we need prophets that have integrity. And we need prophets that have gifting. And we need apostles that have integrity and apostles that have gifting. We need pastors that have integrity and pastors that have gifting. We need teachers that have integrity and we need teachers that have gift, gifting. Amen? We need, all, we, we need evangelists that have integrity and gifting. We don't need just gifting and we don't need just integrity. We need gifting and integrity. Amen? And we need to be strong in both those things. Amen? But here we see in... in, in uh, in this verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, that we edify ourselves. Now, edif edification is great. Um, and if I'm going to edify the church, I need to speak in a known language. In other words, I don't edify you by standing here. I could, I could sit here tonight, and I could sit here and speak in tongues for the next 20 minutes. And I'd really get blessed by speaking in tongues for the next 20 minutes. But I would dare say you probably won't get a lot out of it unless you start speaking in tongues too. But I need to teach and prophesy. And as I teach, I prophesy. I'm prophesying out of my spirit man what God is saying. But as I'm teaching in a known language, your mind is edified and your heart is strengthened and edified. Amen. But when I need to get personal edification from the Lord, one of the ways I do that is I pray in other tongues. And it's so easy, so simple. Here I have my cell phone. And my cell phone requires charging. It's at 45% power right now. And that means that if I let it go long enough, it's going to run out of power. And what happens when it runs out of power and the battery dies? The phone dies. And then I can't receive a call. <laughs> do you get it? And so what I'm saying is, when we pray in other tongues, it's just like taking our phone and plugging it in and charging it up. And some of the different translations about edify in this, in this verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, the CBE translation says, you do good to yourself when you speak in tongues. The New Living Translation says, you strengthen yourself personally in the Lord when you speak in other tongues. The Living Bible says, you help yourself grow spiritually. And the Amplified Bible says, you improve yourself. Well, I want all those for my life and for your life. I, I, sign me up for all those things. And we've got a lot of self-help videos in the body of Christ and, and in the world in general. The best self-help is praying in other tongues. You'll improve yourself. You'll strengthen yourself. You're, you'll edify yourself. You'll build yourself up in your most holy faith. Amen. Number nine, tongues for giving thanks. Tongues for giving thanks. The Bible reveals that when we pray in other tongues, sometimes when we're praying in tongues, we're releasing thanksgiving to God. Now, where's that at? It's in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15 through 17. It says this, what is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray also with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Notice Paul says, I will. That means at your will, your will, not God's will, not God's will, your will, my will, we can step out and we can sing in other tongues or we can pray in other tongues at any moment that we choose to do so. And Holy Spirit, it's not turning him on. He's always on. He's waiting on you and me to plug into him, and he'll give us the utterance and give us the words to speak. So, we, but, so number one, we see that it's at our will to do this gift. God's not just going to always come upon us and make us speak in other tongues. I'm not saying that can't happen. It can. But most times, it's you making a quality decision because you've been taught all these benefits of speaking in other tongues. And you say, based on those benefits, I want to take advantage of this gift, and I'm going to speak in other tongues. Amen? So 
you can give thanks by giving by praying in other tongues. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verse 16 and 17 says this. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. So at Thanksgiving dinner, I pray in other tongues, but I've, I've had many Thanksgiving dinners with unbelievers or uh, Christians who haven't been taught about this or experienced this present. I don't, I don't pray at the Thanksgiving meal in other tongues. That would be a little bit weird. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that. If God leads you to do it, go for it, even if there's unbelievers present because tongues is a sign. But if you're just doing it uh, without an unction of the Holy Spirit, in that case, you could cause some, you could have a, a problem. <laughs> Amen. And, and uh, I'm not talking about being seeker sensitive. I'm talking about being spirit led because tongues are a sign for an unbeliever. And if God taps, you know, if he, if he uh, gives you utterance to step out and speak in an unknown tongue, it's going to impact those you're around and it's going to be a witness. Amen. So you just be led of the Holy Ghost on that. But we do know that when we pray in other tongues, we can be giving thanks in the process. However, when we're praying with other people and giving thanks and, and we're leading a prayer, it's better to give thanks in English at least to start with. Okay. Amen. Tongues for giving thanks. In speaking of other tongues, you can give thanks. Number 10, freedom from worldly contamination. Freedom from worldly contamination. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 28, let his words be to himself and to God, speaking in other tongues. Let his words be to himself and to God. What's the writer talking about? What's Paul writing about? He's talking about, you know, you could be, going through life and there's some places you have to be just because you have to be there and there can be some really bad influences around you and people that are trying to contaminate you with their perversion, their immorality, their lifestyle of sin, their darkness, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say. One of the ways that you can stay, stay uh, walking in the spirit and plugged into the spirit is just under your breath. You can just be praying in tongues under your breath. And you know what? They won't even know you're praying in tongues. But you're letting that river flow up, out, out, bubble up out of your belly. You're letting that river of living water flow out of your be belly, and you're receiving rest and refreshing. Now, your tongue is connected to your brain, but your tongue's also connected to your spirit. And when you're speaking in other tongues, you're, you're praying in another tongue from your spirit. You literally can read the Bible and pray in other tongues at the same time. Because your spirit man is the one who speaks another, who, who is exercising, who's connecting to the tongue. So sometimes I'll actually do this. I'll be praying in other tongues and reading my Bible at the same time. My mind is not bothered by praying in other tongues because my mind is not praying in other tongues. My spirit is. So you can actually pray in tongues and read your Bible at the same time and get double edification. Hey, I'm all for good time management, right? <laughs> Um, so freedom from worldly con contamination. Number 11, helps you become spirit conscious and God inside minded. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says this, for if I pray in, an, in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. That validates what I just said about my spirit's praying, not my mind. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 19, or do you, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Now look at this, church. I, if I pray in unknown tongue, my spirit prays. And you know what? Somebody taught me this some years ago, and it really helped me that as you begin to sp speak in other tongues, you identify where the, the river of God flows out of your spirit. And right here, the river of God flows out of my spirit. That's where the river of God comes up out of my spirit when I pray in tongues. You know what? It's the same place the voice of God comes up out of my spirit. So when I pray in other tongues, I'm becoming conscious Holy Spirit is in me all the time. And he's always on. And I can always avail myself of his help all the time. He's the helper and he's the standby. Standby means 
he's ready to go at a moment's notice all the time. And he's the helper to help me all the time. Too many Christians are going through life and living by their natural mind and their knowledge level instead of living by the unction of the Holy Spirit and his wisdom, his knowledge, and his understanding. And when you pray in unknown tongues, all of a sudden you're tuning in. It's like taking an old clock radio or old radio that had an analog dial and you're tuning in, you know, getting off an of AM channel, flesh channel, and getting on the FM channel, getting on the spirit channel, God's voice channel, you're tuning in and you're realizing he's in me. God is in me. God is in me. Holy Spirit, I have the ability of God. And Acts 1.8 says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That word power in the Greek, one translation, is supernatural ability. And so you need to remember Holy Spirit is in you and he gives you and me supernatural ability supernatural power to reign and rule and have the wisdom of God, the mind of Christ, and to have the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning of sp spirits, gift of faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. I don't uh, possess the constant manifestation of those gifts. I possess the one or he possesses me who has the manifestation, but he's always willing to manifest when there's a need. Amen? Amen. So number 12, number 12, brings the tongue under sub subjection. Oh my gosh, this is so important. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit helps you bring your most unruly member under subjection to God. James chapter 3 verse 8 says this, no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. There is such power and authority in our tongue. You know, when we use our tongue to bless and to edify others, we're using our tongue in, in line with God's word. When we l use our tongue to destroy people and hurt them and to, uh, and I, I almost don't want to say the word criticize because the word criticize or to critique, if it's done by spirit, by love, so that you can uh, go higher in God is not a bad thing. In other words, you know, growing up, I, I played tennis and football, and my coach would critique my performance. He'd say, hey, when you throw the ball up, you're throwing it a little too close to your body, and it's causing your serve to go long. He said, throw your, your, the ball up a little farther in front of you, and you'll transfer your weight into your serve. That gave me more power in my serve, and I was less likely to hit the ball out. He was critiquing me, coaching me, but not to tear me down, to help me be better. I, I love that. And I say, Holy Spirit, I want your critique. And I, I know you're not out there, you know, tearing me down, but anything you say to me, Holy Spirit, or anything my spiritual leaders say to me, is done out of a spirit of love to help me grow if I'm open to it. Amen? And so uh, the, the Holy Spirit is in us to help us in so many ways. But the, one of the biggest helps we need is to bring our tongue under subjection. And when I pray in another tongue, I'm literally yielding the control of my tongue to God Almighty through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if I can bring my tongue under subjection, the Bible says that's the most un unruly member, then everything else is going to be easy by contrast. Amen. Brings the tongue under subjection. That's number 12. We just have two more, and we're going to wrap things up tonight. Number 13, tongues are the door to the supernatural and the rest of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Tongues are the door to the supernatural and the rest of the gifts of the Spirit. How do we know this? Acts chapter 19 and verse 6. And uh, verse 6, now in this passage, Paul comes to Ephesus and he finds certain believers who had only heard the John, uh, John's baptism. And he said, uh, what are you baptized into? And they said, oh, we've been baptized into John's baptism. And he said, yeah, that was good. That You did what you knew. But John baptized a baptism of repentance and said, you should believe on him that comes after John, and that person is Jesus. And so they heard the preaching, they accepted Jesus, they're baptized, and the Bible says, Paul laid his hands upon them, and all the men were about 12, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And that's Acts 19.6. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Notice... They spoke with tongues, 
And then all of a sudden, instantly, they started operating in another gift of the nine gifts of the Spirit. I feel it's important to, to comment on this as well. There is a difference between praying in other tongues for personal edification and the gift, the, the 1 Corinthians 12 gift of uh, tongues and interpretation, okay? So I pray in tongues all the time uh, for my own personal edification. It has nothing to do with anybody else. But at times, I'll get a message in other tongues and then followed by an interpretation of other tongues. And that's in a public setting to edify the body. One is for me, one is to help others, okay? Everybody can participate in the tongues for personal edification. Not necessarily everybody will participate in a public setting where the tongues and interpretation operates. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So tongues is the door to the supernatural and the rest of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've actually seen this happen in my own ministry years ago. My wife and I had a couple over to our house, and they were born again, but they wanted more of God. <laughs> and I love being around people who are hungry for more of God. That's one of the biggest keys of receiving more of God is wanting more of God. And so we were in our living room at our house, and we laid hands on them and prayed for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They fell out on the floor under the power of God, began speaking in other tongues, and then the husband began prophesying. And he didn't even realize he was, pro he began prophesying, speaking by the word of the Lord while he was rolling around on the floor. <laughs> he was a holy roller. <laughs> and, and he hadn't been schooled in that. He was just having an encounter with God. And he was rolling on the floor in my living room, speaking in tongues. And then he begins to prophesy. He was prophesying the word of the Lord to himself. It was glorious. I was standing back rejoicing, watching what Holy Spirit was doing awesome, awesome time in God. Amen. But he spoke with tongues and he prophesied just like in Acts 19. You know, we can have the same experiences the apostles had in the Bible there for us today to enjoy. Amen. And then number 14, number 14, the final reason, and I'm sure there's more in the word if you want to dig, but number 14, tongues is a sign, advertisement, to unbelievers, 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. There are masses of charismatic Christians who do not understand this. And they literally think that all the time that speaking in tongues is always going to cause an unbeliever to run away or be freaked out. Well, that's why I say be led, because I have seen that happen. I've seen unbelievers hear somebody speaking in tongues, and they run away and get freaked out. I've seen that happen. But let me tell you something. I sit here today, a man of God in ministry, the night I got born again in a church, was they called a prayer meeting spontaneously, and a person stood up behind me and began to speak in a booming voice, in a message in other tongues. And guess what happened? When they began to speak the interpretation of that tongues, the fear of God, the terror of God, the terror of the Lord. Look it up. Those words are in my New Testament and your New Testament, knowing them the terror of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, something the church has forgotten, something the church has thrown out that the church desperately needed because in the book of Acts, they walked in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We don't need either or. We need both. It's a holy reverence for his awesomeness and a respect for him. Amen? But that man began to speak in other tongues. I was an unbeliever. As soon as he began to speak, I knew it was not a man speaking. I knew it was God speaking. I knew it was God speaking. And I said, God is real. I felt the presence of God come on me. And then I went into a heavenly vision and had an encounter at the throne of God that changed me forever. All of it started when a man behind me stood up in a church service and gave a message in other tongues.